it wouldn't surprise me if the Buckeyes snagged a running back from the transfer portal to replace Dallin Hayden. You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I know this is the first week of a new intro, and I am still not over how good it sounds, how crisp and clear and engaging the video is. And it's hard to believe we're also here on a Friday as well. Welcome in, Buckeye fans, to a Friday edition of Locked on Buckeyes here on Friday, April 19th in the year 2024. I am your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens podcast. And today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I admit it. I have a competitive side and is a big fan of Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. So join your friends and download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. During today's episode, once again, Brian Smith, who is Locked On's recruiting analyst, will be with us to dive into a couple positions the Buckeyes should entertain when it comes to getting players via the transfer portal and also dive into a couple players that recently committed to the Ohio State Buckeyes. It's a feel-good Friday. It's a recruiting Friday. Transfer portal as well. Got a fun show here for you. I'm sure you're going to love it. And as you welcome in Brian Smith, I'd like to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps fund the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. Terms and conditions apply. The transfer portal is one of those things, Brian, right now that a lot of people are looking to see where will their team, uh, what position will their team focus on in the transfer portal. And a lot of people think Ohio State doesn't really need to use a portal right now. They got a couple transfers um, in the quarterback room. They they got some guys on defense, a guy on the offensive line. Dallin Hayton leaves the Buckeyes to go to the portal. And I personally think they should consider and definitely utilize the portal to replace Dallin Hayton. And this is not my way of saying that James Peoples is bad or Sam Williams Williams Dixon is bad. That's not what I'm saying. I just can't rely on a true freshman, the guy who's never played college football before. Would you want something on your third running back that you know this is what they're going to provide game one, game two, game three in that role? I think you should consider it and possibly just go out there and find somebody in the portal to replace Dallin Hayden. There's a couple ways to look at it. You're going to have a workhorse guy and everybody else is going to get 10% 10% of the reps, but then you put yourself at risk. Remember Dallin's first year, he ended up starting against Michigan and he was fourth he string to start the year. Because, and it wasn't because he passed them. It's because they all got hurt. Yes. Coach Alford had told me that spring, Hey, we need to get another running back. We're a little short. You know, he, he thought they were short. He was right. Yes. So I said, I think you'll be okay with four. You got four good ones. He goes, yeah, but the injuries of running back happen all the time. Four ain't enough. So if they're talking about the third guy, they're in trouble. They don't take a portal guy. We're going to revisit this late October or something when a guy's got a hamstring, another guy's got a new br- knee breeze, uh, knee bruise, and a freshman who can't pass block for crap is in the backfield on third and eight. Just remember this. It's going to happen. Every team has injuries at running back. You need five guys that can play because it's such a bad position for, to get beat up. It's nobody's fault. Mm-mm. But Ohio State plays downhill, too. They're a little better up front. If they don't get a running back in the portal, and it doesn't have to be a guy that's a dude. It, it can be a guy that catches 10 passes and makes 25 runs during the year, but he's a hell of a pass protector because he's 6'1", 230, and a fifth-year senior from Bowling Green or something. doesn't have to be a complete dude. You need more bodies. If you don't get it, I don't want to hear any complaining in the fall. You know, Brian, let's just think about – Ohio State needing five running backs. And I'm just going to put like quickly relay who they have the years and a little bit of experience they got. You got the two top guys, Travion Henderson and Quinshawn Jenkins. They're really experienced. Good. I think over 5,000 total rushing yards combined. You also have the next two guys. These are scholarship guys, James Peoples and Sam William Dixon. They are incoming freshmen, haven't played ball yet at this level. Then you got TC Caffey, who's a walk on. Played a little bit, has some good film in 2022, but got hurt last year. And he's also a walk-on that barely has played at Ohio State. So three of the five guys have barely played. The top two guys, they have played a lot. They're, they've shown what they can do on the film. 
Henderson is the most banged up out of all five of them. And if only two of the five and one of the top two, if only two of the five are experienced and one of the top two that's experienced gets hurt a lot, you got to go to the portal. Look, I was super high on Travion coming out of high school. I thought he was as good a running back as there was in the country. But, man, he has just been injury prone his whole freaking career. Are you really going to count on him to play more than eight games healthy? I mean, you can if you want. And for his sake, I hope so, because he'd already be in the NFL draft if they hadn't told him you need to you need to come back because we don't trust you're going to. I guarantee you that's what happened because yeah. it's not a physical gifts issue. I mean, this is a dude that had 53 touchdowns of like his senior year of high school. So everybody knew what he could do. An Ohio State guy came in and played right away and all that. But look, Judkins, I'm, I'm not sold on him for other reasons that I'm sure you've discussed on this show. And a few of my friends really hate him that are Ole Miss people. I'll leave it at that. You've got some issues there. You need at least one guy from the portal. And it's not fair to the freshman to be thrown into an offense like Ohio State that has so many check with me things. Day's offense is not easy. All the audibles, if you miss one audible and the quarterback gets smacked, again, we will revisit this conversation. Oh, you didn't go get a portal running back. Okay. There you go. It doesn't have to be a main runner. Like you said, they got over 5,000 yards with their top two. Yeah. If they're both hurt at the same time, I mean, that's just terrible luck. It wasn't your year anyway, but you still want to have somebody to kind of rotate in to take some of the carries off of them in some of the snaps. That's the key. And especially, and I, I know this is mean, but some of the teams they play, I don't need to see Quinchon. He can play three snaps against Bowling Green or whatever. And if he has to play well into the third quarter, there's other problems. So then that's when James Peoples yeah. should have 12 carries, okay? Not against teams that are in the Big Ten like Michigan, not against Penn State, not against Oregon, et cetera. Brian, some of those early games in the year, you talk about like the Bowling Greens and the Toledos and like the sure. Midwestern schools that are very G5 and Ohio State should just run over. If Peoples or Williams Dixon is in the game third, fourth quarter – they're not getting those pass rep, those pass protection reps that they would need yeah, if they if one of the top two guys gets hurt. So you talk about the twelve carries or twelve touches. That's great. I'm, no problem with that. But one of the toughest things with the freshman, as you mentioned earlier, is pass protection and blitz pickups. You're not getting those reps in mop up duty, which is another reason why considering or even just simply going after someone in the portal makes a whole lot of sense. Look, there, there's no way around it. Experience matters. But there's risk at running back. And I've had a lot of off-the-record conversation with running back coaches, offense coordinators. They hate freshman running backs. Just in a generic – I'm not talking about Ohio State, but I'm just talking in general. It's hard. Uh, I'll never forget – I won't embarrass the guy. He's, he played in the NFL briefly. His first year at a major program, everybody was watching. There was one drill going on in the whole practice. They did it over and over for everybody. And they got to the true freshman. He was a stud running back. Everybody, Ohio State offered him. It was one of these kids. They had an outside linebacker that was a redshirt freshman. It was about 230. Really highly recruited kid, too. Pass rush drill. It looked like a gnat getting hit by a Mack truck. Oh, my. <laughs> he got flattened. And this was a kid that was 198 pounds, yoked, recruited from coast to coast, had 40 offers, and he couldn't pass block. Freshmen do not belong in the game on third and eight. So, again, there's no way you can't tell me that Youngstown State, Bowling Green, one of these schools, an H-back fullback that you could get, if nothing else, to get help for that. So peoples and those guys don't have to do it. It's not it, – they're not going to be ready for it. You know, they didn't sign a 230-pound freshman running back, to my knowledge, that's ready for that kind of wear and tear. And there's very few of those guys. So mm -hmm. if you could get a portal guy to do it, great. And if not, there maybe there's a walk-on fullback or something, or you, you might you have to use a tight end back there with Will when he's throwing passes. He cannot take extra shots because your running backs aren't ready. I think the two guys, like I like Peoples as a runner. Yeah, I think he, I think he's a good player. I don't think he's Travion's level, but he's he's good. So maybe they'll find a ways to get him the ball that way, and maybe even use him in the slot or something. He's pretty shifty. You know, Brian just mentioned Will Howard, and we just watched a spring game, and I'm curious to get his thoughts on Will Howard, Devin Brown, saying, and the other quarterbacks that are in this quarterback competition. We'll get that next. This episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I've been told I'm a competitive person. 
okay, well, yeah, I have a competitive side. We all do. And my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly, where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. But the best part is messing with my friends. I can charge them rent on my iconic properties, just like classic Monopoly. But now I can also heist their vaults of riches for myself. And the leaderboards show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people all around the world in timed tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now, free on the App Store or Google Play. This episode is brought to you by eBay Motors, passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance, superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible bottoms only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. The Locked On NFL Mock Draft is available now. Find the ultimate six-episode series on Locked On NFL Draft to hear who the local Locked On experts are picking for every NFL franchise with live reactions from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle. The Locked On NFL Mock Draft available now on Locked On NFL Draft on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Brian, we talked about Sand a little bit, talked about somewhat about how he may or may not play in the fall and your hesitancy on playing a freshman, especially a true freshman quarterback, as a starting for Ohio State and any of these big-time schools. What are your thoughts right now, though, on the quarterback battle going on right now at Ohio State? It's wild because they have so many talented guys, but nobody's separating. I watched it because I know Jeremiah, and I was just curious – and I walked away from it really ticked off because he should have scored like three touchdowns and Will didn't have a good day. He missed him a couple of times. It wasn't just Will either. They weren't that accurate in the red zone, which drove me nuts. They had some really good throws, and Jeremiah actually dropped a pass. I, I couldn't remember the last time I that fade ball on the sideline. That's not the easiest catch, but he never drops that. So they were just out of sync. I'm curious to see what they're like in games one and two this fall. Because going through reps over summer, Jeremiah and the entire, like, you know, Cardinal Tate, everybody, they'll be better. But right now I'm a little bit nervous. I'm not a big fan of Will with his accuracy because I just don't think he's good enough. I think that he's a better runner and everything, but he's not a whole lot better as a pure passer Mm -mm. than the guy that just went to Syracuse. And if Ohio State fans think this is just going to be a consistent air raid kind of offense, I'm telling you, you better drop your expectations. Uh, based on what I saw, there's still one team in the country that's way better than everybody. It's Georgia, and it's way better. Uh, that includes Ohio State. They, they're they not where they need to be at quarterback. I was a little surprised by it. Again, it's one game, et cetera, but Will didn't look that good to me. He was just not very accurate. No, he wasn't, and I am not going to shy away from what you just said either. I do think Georgia is still the best team in the country, and I do think if it was Carson Beck and Will Howard or Carson Beck and Devin Brown in the playoff – I'm giving the quarterback odd in the bet to Carson Beck. Like, that's an easy one right there. And I don't think any – if you say, oh, it's the Ohio State guy without giving a name and giving a good explanation, I don't think you're confused. Uh, Will Howard has – he's shown me some some okay film, but it's one, it's not up to Ohio State standard. And two, I don't know if he's ever going to be good enough to win the national championship. He may win the Big Ten, but that's hard with Oregon coming over and USC and Lincoln Riley going to try to score 50 on you every weekend – it's going to be really hard for that to actually happen this year with Will Howard, unless over the next few months he just gets a whole lot better. But right now it is Georgia. And I don't know if Ohio State offensively could do enough over the next few months and in the summer to change that. 
the, the thing about it is it, it's been this way forever. If a quarterback finds a groove, it's unexplainable. A lot of this stuff, like he knows the reads, he knew where to go, et cetera. It might just be something small technically that he was doing, but like the ball was short a little bit. He didn't have good timing with Jeremiah in particular. And again, he's a true freshman. So that's not really shocking. And it shouldn't be shocking to you or anybody out there in Buckeye land. But if they don't improve that, they're not going to, not only are they not going to beat Georgia, they may not make it to playing Georgia. And everything else, I think, like you watch that defense, they were about as locked in as you're going to get. That was part of it too. But some of these receivers were beating the DBs and it was their separation and the ball yeah. wasn't close. Mm -mm. That's a checkbox. Yeah. You can't miss deep shots and over routes and stuff that are 30 yard gains when you've got a yard, yard and a half. You just can't. And some of them just weren't catchable. And again, this is not just Will. Brown didn't always have the greatest passes, et cetera. And I think the best passer is the true freshman, but he's not ready with the reads and all that. It's it, That's a second year deal. So they got to figure something out because everything else is lined up for Ohio State to win a national title. The O-line's at least better. The defense is conservatively top five nationally. And they've got talented running backs and stuff to go on with the obvious ridiculous talent they have at receivers. So they just got to figure that quarterback spot out, man. Brian, there's one thing I think they also need to figure out, and it's in the wide receiver room. Now, this is going to be a touchy subject for a lot of Ohio State fans because we all believe in Brian Hartline and what he can do, developing players and recruiting guys, all of that stuff. But there's been kind of a maybe a log jam or kind of an obstacle for some of the older guys in the room that haven't played at Ohio State that even now with some of the younger guys coming in and Tate and Ennis and Smith and Rodgers – that some of the guys that have been there three or four years haven't got on the field, and I don't think they're going to get on the field this year, Brian. It goes into Emeka Buka being experienced, probably a first-round pick in the next draft, 2025. You got Smith, you got Ennis, you got Tate, you got Bryson Rogers. Those guys, the latter, are, are inexperienced. It wouldn't shock me here if Brian Hartline went to the portal to get a guy with a little experience in college football to come to Ohio State to help out the Buckeyes quarterbacks. You only need like one more guy. It could be a tight end too. It, mm, you know, if a flex tight, like if you got a really good flex tight end that you could play in the slot that could block some, you get guys like Tate and Ennis, the football on a screen with a good block and a head start. That's not a good time for mm -hmm. DBs. There's a lot of ways to do it. Uh, the tight end, I don't know if he's back, but the tight end Ohio State last year was really good. Guys like that are valuable. And you got to find different ways to make it happen. Maybe they, Maybe they don't get a receiver, but with that many young guys, you got to figure like Jeremiah's a little bit different, but somebody might hit a wall like Rodgers might hit a wall game eight, nine. Having another veteran player is not a bad idea. It's got to be the perfect fit. You can't just throw, you know, mud at a wall. But if you got a 210 pound receiver that could help Jeremiah take some, take some reps off him, I assume he'll start at boundary. That's probably a good idea. Again, and I'm not picking on these schools. Jeremiah Smith doesn't need 60 snaps against Toledo. No, no he doesn't. No. <laughs> 25 snaps. Then like if I was at the game and I was on the side, he should be over on the edge of the, the box talking to me about going back to South Florida for a vacation or something. You know, he shouldn't be worried about it because it should be 35 to seven in the middle of third quarter. That's just the way it is. So you've got to have depth. And I, I, I loved Rogers film coming out of high school, but these are still not kids that are physically ready to take on a 12-game season, and Ohio State has aspirations to win a title. They need to have more depth. And if you can get a bigger guy, especially that's got a little experience, played a year or two, I think they should at least consider it. You know, I don't – I have been one. I've been a believer of a lot of the young guys. I've been high on Bryce and Rodgers, even Noah Rodgers, before he transferred away from Ohio State. I like what they bring to the table. But the more I think about it and the more I hear you talk, and I think a little bit different than I normally would – I understand the experience that is needed at that position. Yeah, because being able to run your routes in high school is one thing, or do it in practice is another. Being able to do it on a Saturday afternoon or evening in the fall, but do it week in, week out, no matter if it's Toledo, Bowling Green, or you're going up against Penn State in Michigan. Being able to do it no matter who the opponent is is huge. And sometimes I'm hesitant to adding a guy right now at this time of year, especially a receiver, but then it's like, if he's experienced, if he knows what he's doing, and he can help you in the run game as a blocking receiver, that's a big thing that a lot of young guys, just like running backs and pass protection, a lot of young receivers, they struggle in run blocking on the outside. You, you can get an experienced guy that can help you in run blocking and be 
the 6'2", 6'3", 210, 220, whatever, that's a little bit different body than what you have right now, I think that's a good thing that Heartline should consider. Yeah, again, it, it doesn't have to be the number of players. It needs to be the type of player. It's very specific. Experience, got some power, and is going to be able to take reps off and just wants to play at Ohio State. Doesn't necessarily have to be a first-round draft pick, good player that may have a chance, but knows that he's going to be in the rotation. Again, that fits rare because most guys aren't going to transfer because, like, high State's got too many good players. I'm not going to get enough reps. So that's why I brought up, like, Toledo. Boy, an Ohio kid that was pissed he didn't get offered by Ohio State out of high school. This is the most likely answer. Yeah. I know, we do, you know, Kyle Ford maybe or something, and they recruited him earlier. But I'm not sure. I don't know. Guy like that, I'm surprised he wants to come. But if he does, that's great. I mean, that's a bonus to Ohio State but he's going to share a lot of snaps. He might get 25 snaps in a game where if he went to Colorado state, he's going to get 45. So if you could get that, that's the perfect deal, but it's not an easy fit, man. That's a very small crevice to get through. I want to touch on a very quick thing about Kyle Ford after the break and some schools he's focusing on in his recruitment right now. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets. One thing I mention it all the time, my family loves to do is go to Cubs games in Cincinnati when they're playing the Reds. There are times it's a last-minute decision, and we're trying to find the best place to find tickets. Game time is that that place. They have tickets available where we want to sit with the prices that we love. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCK. E-D-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Brian, it's interesting you bring up Kyle Ford because I recently saw that he's focusing on six schools right now moving forward in his recruitment. He was at USC for a long time, I believe UCLA last year, which is really odd to me that you're transferring to your rival that just doesn't sit well with me at all um True. but the six schools that he is currently focusing on right now usc okay going back to that school michigan south carolina florida wake forest and ohio state wake forest south carolina they're not on the same level as ohio state but i understand if you want a bigger role at a school go down to, go go to that level no problem with you doing that but if he comes to ohio state he must one accept his role but two, accept it and do it consistently and be a team player and a leader. There's a lot of factors into him coming to Ohio State. But I do think a guy, he's 6'3", 220. He's played a lot of ball. He's not a guy that's going to come in and want to take reps and be like, hey, I need 1,000 yards right now. Like, he's never done that. I don't think he's had over 500 in a, in a single season. So he's not just one of these, like, diva kind of guys. But he can come in and help you and be a leader heartline once it needs in that room. You put it very well when you said he's got to understand like the role and the fit and all that. That's what I was alluding to in the prior segment. And if he's that guy, that's great. But when you said Wake Forest, I'm like, I don't know about all this. South Carolina is at least Southeastern Conference. They've got a coach that's pretty good. And, you know, there's a lot to that. But I'm not so sure that he's the guy. You know what I mean? It could be somebody else. And that's fine. But he does fit the profile, like the body is what you're looking for if you're Ohio State. They need another bigger bodied guy that can help Jeremiah limit reps. And he's, I mean, he's played at SC and UCLA. He's used to the fodder in the newspapers. He's used to the pressure from the student body and all that. He'll fit in at Ohio State much better than most people will because it's a, it's a pressure cooker. But they got to make sure if they take him, he's going to be able to do the things you mentioned. And it's okay that I'm not the profile guy. I'm going to compete. I'll be in the rotation, but you know, I am my only catch 20 passes this year. Yeah, that's it. Brian, during the spring game, there were a couple of players that committed to Ohio State. One of them was a guy we recently talked about, a Nate Roberts, a talented tight end from Oklahoma, but then also an in-state kid from Cleveland, Cody Haddad. 
His dad also played in the NFL, NFL Europe, played for the Bills, uh, played for University of Buffalo. He was playing for a while. But Nate Roberts committing to Ohio State was one of those things that we talked about. It's a possibility. But getting a guy like that, 6'4", 235, that possesses more new age, a new age skill set at tight end, not your typical Ohio State tight end, but can do things that I think Chip Kelly will want from his tight end in a Chip Kelly offense, this is a great gift for the Buckeyes right now. He is the rare guy that can make plays after the catch, and he is truly a tight end. He can play some inline. I like him better as a flex, but that's a guy as a sophomore in high school where we're like, duh. Yeah. But he was a grown man as a sophomore in high school. Really physically gifted young man. I think Ohio State will be able to use him. I'm not saying it's Jeremiah, but like you can line him up at boundary and throw fades to it. He has really good ball skills for a big kid. That is a nightmare inside the 10-yard line. So that's a, not that Ohio State needs more weapons, but you could line him up at running back, run wheel routes, and put some poor linebacker in a bad spot. He's very, very versatile. I'm You know what? I'm kind of surprised. Stover and some other guys, they had some good tight ends, but Ohio State hasn't had a ton of them in the last 20 years that were really good in space. They've still stuck with a little more traditional Big Ten tight ends. Maybe this is truly the transition that you talked about. I thought Jeremy Ruckert was going to be that guy to kind of be more of a little good, different right? mold, but he didn't but progress he didn't like I thought he was going that. to. Yeah, yeah, he was good, but he never got top notch. I don't no. know if he got banged up or what, but they they used him. He played a lot, but if you have a tight end that's a versatile guy, look at what Miami and Notre Dame have done with tight ends over the last 20. It is a nightmare because there's nobody to match up with them when they're locked up out wide. Safety's just not big enough. And the corner certainly isn't. So it's just not fun to go against. And you can move them all kinds of different ways with motions and set things up. It's really hard. So you put somebody like him with Jeremiah and those guys, he could be your slot leading on screens. And on the next play, he blocks down on a, on a draw play. There's a million ways you can use them. Tight ends are very, very, very valuable in the spread offense. The other guy that committed on the day of the spring game was Cody, and I believe his last name is Haddad, St. Ignatius at High School in Cleveland, Ohio, 6'1", 175 pounds. One thing that I saw from him, Brian, that quickly popped off the screen for when I watched the film, he has great instincts. No matter if it's pass, the passing game or if it's the run game, run-stopping game, his instincts are quick. He understands what he what to read. And even if it's a, a deep ball, he could even get back there. And I saw him intercept the ball, and I was like, oh, you're a player. You're a guy. I know. I, don't, I think a, he's only a three-star guy now, and I don't know. I don't dive into all the rating system to know what makes him a three-star versus a four-star versus a five-star, like what separates him, how close is he being a four. I don't know. I don't, I, stars, don't, to me, don't do mean anything on the field. I know it just helps people, especially in shows like this, to kind of describe guys. I didn't see three-star when I watched him. I saw a guy that makes plays and is a playmaker, and I'm glad Ohio State got an in-state kid like this because he's really, really good. I think they can use him in multiple spots. I think that's what makes him attractive to Ohio State in similar programs. He could play strong safety, and he could probably play nickel depending on the formations and the personnel that he's going against. And he's a little twitchier than I thought he would be when I watched yeah. his film. And he plays at a great program. That program's been good since I started following recruiting and around 1990, they've always had players that were Penn State, Ohio State kind of recruits. So he's played against good competition in Cleveland. That's certainly a, a very good football city. And I bet he probably grew up an Ohio State fan. So this is a fit. Worst case scenario, he's going to be a role player, special teams guy that, you know, plays in your nickel package. But I think he can help Ohio State in multiple spots. So eventually I think he'll start for Ohio State. The one thing that I saw that I looked at him and I was like, wait, you're – a guy that plays both sides of the ball and in the return game. And I didn't see him return any punts or kicks in the little portion, in the portion that I saw of watching preparing for this show. But I wonder, like, it's, if you say, like, he's more of a, like a nickel package kind of guy on defense, do you see him being potentially a consistent return guy, either in a punt or kick return game for the Ohio State? I think that's a possibility. He's pretty strong. Like the first key with being a punt returner is catch the ball. After that, it's just make the first guy miss. Even if that means you bounce off of him, he could be pretty effective at it. He's He's got really good balance, lower body power, hips and, and, and core. I think he could be a good return guy. Now, Ohio State has plenty of guys. Tate, 
Ennis, Jeremiah, whoever they wanted to put back there, they'd be fine. This might be a guy that early in his career does that because they don't want to get somebody else get blasted. That's it's a high risk position, but I could see him as a return guy and he would be a great fit on kickoff and punt. Uh, I mean, his mentality fits that to a T. So if he wasn't playing football, he'd be a guy that the Marines would try to recruit. If that That's another way to put it. He, he's, he's a guy that's very physical. I really appreciate Brian coming on the show once again. It's always fun getting his insight and his expertise to touch on the Buckeyes and also the transfer portal. It's hot. It's crazy. I recently saw – Brian, last question here for you. I was trying to close the show, but this just entered my mind. I saw the NCAA is now allowing unlimited transfers if you – me academic requirements. Do you think that's a good thing for the sport? Terrible. Absolutely terrible because kids don't care about loyalty at all. And it's why the coaches are leading the college level. I mean, I could do hours on that, on all the bad reasons for that. It's a absolute Congress is involved and there's court. It is a terrible trend. There has to be consequences for not being loyal right now. It's not that way. It's not good for the sport. That's Brian Smith. He is locked on recruiting analyst. You can follow him on X at FVScout underscore Florida. You can follow me on the same platform at JStevens07. Guys, it's a feel-good Friday. A lot of Buckeye players in the transfer portal. 